So uh, how do we remove a finish off a stock? Because after you do some of this repair work, you're gonna obviously wanna refinish it and uh, apply the oil. That's right. Now the main tool, of course it could simply be sanded off, but you're gonna find with, if you do that, this old finish is gonna gum up into paper and a, you're gonna just keep changing paper, changing paper constantly. So uh, sandpaper is the more tedious way to do it. Right. There's a more efficient way of doing much, this? Much quicker, more efficient. And especially, sometimes you, they have a fairly heavy coat of between the finish and the, uh, the, the, the stain. But you use simply a knife as a scraper. A comparatively sharp knife, smooth uh, blade on it. But you scrape with the grain. And don't get too rambunctious. Remember, you're just taking off the finish. And some people think that, oh, that looks like you're butchering something here, but... And I would assume you'd want a relatively sharp knife with a smooth blade. You don't right. want any uh, major dents in it that'll just yeah. scrape it. No serrated blades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not a butter knife, but a... So you can see, we're down. The finish is basically gone. But it still is a little darker than here, where I've chiseled in. Of course, the wood is natural color of the raw wood is pretty white and this is a little darker okay so there's still a little bit of the staining of the oil goes a little deeper it's okay. kind of feathered in now once you got the whole thing stripped to this then I would go over it with sandpaper probably 200 to 320 grit depending on how many scratches and things you got if there's quite a bit of scratches pretty deep you need to use a little more aggressive paper but take your sandpaper and of course you always go with the grain. Whenever okay. you're touching a gun with sandpaper, it's with the grain. Always. What happens if you go against the grain? Bad things? It shows it shows scratches stand out. With the grain, they're they're basically noticeable. So once you've got it all sanded down, it's pretty nice and smooth, then you go over it with a four hundred grit. Okay. So you start with the knife. Right. Then you move to 320 grit? Yeah, 200 to 320, somewhere in there. Okay. And then uh, 400 grit to smooth it out. Well, I should go on a little further here. We'd have uh, still the question of some minor re uh, repairs, like this dent, for instance. Okay. Once yeah. it's all scraped off, we scrape that out. And the, one of the ways to do it, if it's a dent and not something scratched out of it, is you can sweat it out. You take a cloth, fold it over several times, a washcloth or a rag of any kind. You get it nice and wet, wring it out, you lay it on there, fold it over maybe three times, and apply heat to it. And I mean hot iron. Well, a soldering iron would work well. Uh, a clothes iron. Real hot just, water. Just press it to it. Okay. And then you want to just check periodically if that cloth starts to get a little dry or something, re-wet it, put it on there. Because you don't want to have it on a dry cloth. What you're doing is creating a steam that's going to go over the wood, will absorb it, and it'll push back those compressed, dented in fibers out to the surface. And uh, you can usually get it out very close, sometimes it's completely out. And uh, at other instances. Can we get a dent this big out of the stock by doing that method? It, it's always anybody's guess. You don't know until you try, it's always worth a try. And that depends on several things. Uh, what part of the wood you're you're doing it on? You know, the wood has uh, you see the dark streaks and the light streaks of the green. The dark are generally harder. And if this goes right through the heart, the meat of a, a heavier dark streak, it's going to be less likely to swell up and come back again. The lighter, if it's in the lighter piece of wood, most of it that more readily takes the steam and swells up. So we can pop that dent out possibly just by yeah. hot water. And if nothing else, you'll pop it up quite a bit more, maybe three quarters of the way out or 80%. If you can, then you can sand that out. Now, how much time is involved with something like this? How, how Do you have to wait five seconds, five minutes, a day? No, it's just a matter of seconds. You hold on to five, 10 seconds. Okay. To check, make sure it's wet again and just keep doing it and then and check the wood once in a while. So if you it's going it to pop out, you're going to see immediate... You should do it with, you know, within the, the time of the application. How about scrapes? If we have scratches in the stock, like let's say right, we have a scratch here. 
how are we going to want to prep that? Now that one is shallow enough you simply sand it out. Once you've done scraping the finish off and you're using that 200 to 320 grit, I would just sand down till that's gone. Okay. You know, you have uh, even the thin parts, there's a considerable amount of wood here and it's considerably more than the depth of the scratch. So uh, you're not going to harm the integrity of the wood by sanding out those minor scratches. In fact, some of these dents could totally be scra uh, sanded off. Okay. Now we have something like this bad split here, and this is why this is just my practice stock to try things on. This has had a terrible bad gouge out of here, and it's in a, I see a wavy, awkward pattern, and it's old. The, the old patina of the old weathered wood is over the gouge, so that happened a long time ago. So like I said, I'm not even quite sure how, I mean, I, it could be done if it needed to be. You'd have to patch it? It would be patched, definitely. I'd have to find a piece of wood that blends and matches with it. I would cut this out as smooth and flat as I can it without taking any more wood than I have to, but to get to a smooth surface, find a piece that's that size with the grain oriented correctly and make sure that its bottom surface that's going to go on this new surface that's nice and flat are both perfectly flat. And you, just, you just keep trying it until and you touch it and look along the edges, make sure that if it's perfectly mated, again, the carpenter's wood glue on there. And if it's like, in this case, a flat surface, you wouldn't need to use the tourniquet method. You could simply prop it up with the weight on there. And in the wood glue, you, I think it dries usually overnight. I usually give it two days just to be sure. Black walnut stock that we were just uh, working on doesn't require stain. Uh, boil linseed oil in it brings out the natural dark color of the black walnut. When you're working with beech or birch wood or maple, they're very light color. That's this, huh? And some people don't like that real light color. Some people don't mind it. But if you don't like it, you can do like I did at this birch stock. And after I was all done with it, I completely stained it with a red mahogany stain. Letting that dry completely, I put on one coat of boil linseed oil. Now, if you look close, you can see it's a, like a, looks like a slightly rough. So what I would need to do yet is to either go over that with a real fine steel wool, quadruple O steel wool, just lightly roughen it up, and then another coat of linseed oil and another coat, two or three coats, and it would be very glossy smooth. Um, the other thing was you can stain maple because it is so light. And I've seen it stained to a very reddish color or uh, brown, whatever. And it just brings out the highlights of the, the wood. It is difficult to stain. There's uh, some stains that you don't want to take very well in maple. In the old days, uh, the Kentucky Long Rifle days, they did one uh, a type of a stain using an acid. It's called uh, aqua fortis, I mean, the heavy water. And you simply paint it on to the stock. It's like a little bit thicker liquid. And you apply heat to it, just hold it over an even open fire off away from the flame and gently turn it and move it. And as you're doing it, you see it starting to turn a darker reddish brown. And uh, back in Daniel Boone's, they, a lot of those Kentucky rifles were made out of maple and they were finished with aqua fortis and acid and then heat on it. Once you've got it to where you desire it, then you simply wash off the excess acid. And if it was some places it took too dark, then lightly sand it and to find a uniform color to it. It has a distinctive look to it when it's off a fortis stain, but that's something that's really in the past. Most people wouldn't bother with it today. But I did have a request recently for a man who builds Kentucky rifles if, he, if I could do that for him. And I said, yeah, I know how and I've done it. Okay. Now this stock, you see it, it's got an old, rough, uh, dark, darkened finish on it. It's an old military stock, and uh, that's the original finish, I'm sure, that's seen a lot of hard weathering. But it's not bad. As you see from scraping it, we got down to some pretty decent looking wood pretty quickly. Now you'll find, sometimes you'll find an old military stock that has been sitting for so many years in oil, over-oiled gun and with cosmoline to where the wood soaks it up and it's black and it's it's in fairly deep and uh, they can be a nightmare to try to get them to clean wood 
One of the tricks that I haven't personally tried, but I've talked to some people have, is that you take it outside, prop it up somewhere, you use spray on oven cleaner, and you spray this whole stock down with that, as drastic as it sounds, and it kind of have fumes is why you want to do it outdoors. You let it set for the recommended working times if you're cleaning an oven, and then you hope just wash it off with water and reapply if necessary. Sometimes you do it two or three times. But surprisingly, it seems to just draw that black, gunky, old finish and oil out of the wood. Then they sand, and I've seen the results, and they're very nice. It was, a, it was surprising. So that's for the real hard cases.